Somebody donated a bunch of property out but there. But she wouldn't tell me where it was. One minute. Call the meeting order, please. Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Buckner? Here. Reverend Campbell? Here. Mayor Jones? Here. Dr. Miller? Here. Mr. Saunders? Here. Mr. Shank? Here. Mr. Toma? Here. Vice Mayor Vogler? Here. Mr. Whittle? Here. Let me say good evening to everyone and welcome to council. We, at this time, we have an invocation by Sherman Saunders with a, a followed by a Pledge of Allegiance. Would everyone please stand? Nope. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Father, we come tonight to say thank you for your many blessings. We ask that you will forgive us for the things we may have done that were not in your will. To you, God, we apologize. We ask for your guidance as we try to serve the citizens of this wonderful city. We pray for the success of families and businesses. Please guide, please guide our children, parents, school, leaders of government, and all charged with making decisions that impact our daily living. Please continue to bless our city employees, law enforcement personnel, public safety workers, neighbors, and others. God, your children, everywhere. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Again, we want to say good evening to everyone. and. I'd like to call Miss Karen Hill, if you please come forward. And anyone you have with you that you'd like to bring forward, please. Again, good evening to you all. Make yourself at home. <laughs> yeah. Whereas nurse practitioners NPs serve as trusted frontline health care providers for patients in our state, and whereas nurse practitioners are highly skilled practitioners with advanced education and clinical training, building upon their initial registered nurse preparation, and whereas there are more than 248,000 nurse practitioners in the United States and 9,200 in Virginia, providing primary acute and specialty care to patients of all ages and walks of life. And whereas, in addition to diagnosing and treating acute and chronic conditions, nurses practitioners focus on health promotion, disease prevention and health education and counseling, guiding patients to make smarter health and lifestyle choices, and whereas the confidence that patients have in nurse practitioners delivered health care is evidenced by the more than one billion annual patient visits made to nurse practitioners across the country. And whereas more than five decades of research demonstrates the high quality of care provided by nurse practitioners, and whereas better utilization 
of nurse practitioners through modernized state laws and improved system policies create better health through a more accessible, efficient, cost-effective, and higher quality healthcare system. And whereas 22 states and the District of Columbia have implemented full practice authority for nurse practitioners, granting patients full and direct access to the outstanding care offered by these health care providers. And whereas leading governmental and policy entities, including the National Academy of Medicine, National Council of State Boards of Nursing, National Governors Association, and Federal Trade Commission have taken notice of the benefits of nurse practitioners' full practice authority and have endorsed such a regulatory model. And whereas Danville is proud, I gotta repeat that again, whereas Danville is proud to recognize and honor the service of nurse practitioners to our city and state. Now, therefore, I, Alonzo Jones, Mayor of the City of Danville, Virginia, do hereby proclaim November 11th through 17th, 2018, as the National Nurse Practitioner Week in recognition of the countless contributions nurse practitioners have made over the past half century and will continue to make to the health and well-being of citizens of our city. I want to invite my council members to stand up and give you all a standing ovation and applause for all that you all do. Please. Please feel free to give some comments. Wait, let's go to the mic. We want to hear you. <laughs> please go to the mic. And all of you all can join her at the mic, please. On behalf of Southside VCMP, we thank you for supporting us and encouraging our endeavors as we go forward. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. Thank you again. Dr. Miller. Well, I have two nurse practitioners in my practice, so that tells you what I think of you. Uh, <laughs> But, it's, you know, uh, we're in a, a rural or underserved area. We wouldn't be close to meeting the demand for the patients. So we really appreciate what you all do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you all. So much. Thank you all again. Thank you. We'd like to call up uh, Mr. Jim Bebo and Lori Ames Brooks from Danville, Pennsylvania Camp Community Service are here to present their annual report. Mayor Jones, members of City Council, Mr. Larkin, and staff. I am Lori Eanes Brooks, board member of the Danville, Pennsylvania Community Services. With great pleasure, I present you with our annual report for fiscal year 2018. This year, and, and you each have one in front of you. This year, our annual report theme is a message to the community about our growth to meet our residents' needs, simply titled, Under Construction. The information in our report outlines the ways that DPCS serves the citizens in the city of Danville and Pennsylvania County. As the preferred provider of top quality behavioral health, developmental disability, and prevention services. The unique cover of this year's annual report presents an aerial view of our main campus location on Hairston Street, which is undergoing expansion and renovations to better serve our community. The variety and complexity of DPCS's services meet the needs of individuals with a behavioral health disorder, a developmental disability, or those who may be at risk. The services that are under construction, there are nearly 50 unique programs for adults and children operated by DPCS through its behavioral health development and prevention services divisions. Some of these programs are small, focused, and provide a very specific service with a large impact, such as the Regional Alliance for Substance Abuse Prevention, RACEAP, Youth Advisory Council. This is a group of 20 teenagers from the six area high schools whose work with their peers resulted in engaging more than 1,000 students to join the 65% who choose not to use alcohol campaign, and hosting a Don't Smoke, No Joke, block party with more than 200 teens. 
Other DPCS programs are large and complex, providing life-changing services to individuals, such as case management that is found in all of our divisions for all disabilities, which served 2,938 individuals last fiscal year. Tonight, I would like to highlight just a few of the incredible numbers and programs that DPCS staff facilitated in fiscal year 2018. In our prevention di division, <clears throat> we served 11,216 individuals in the schools and the community, including family wellness initiative activities like parenting education, giving 160 parents the tools to build stronger families and healthy families, an evidence-based in-home program for at-risk parents of children prenatal to age five, served 59 new parents last year. In response to the opioid epidemic in Virginia, revived trainings are now provided to the community monthly to improve the understanding and response to an opioid overdose with naloxone. This is a medication designed to rapidly reverse opioid overdose. In our developmental and behavioral health services division, we began providing permanent supportive housing services. This is an evidence-based program to aid those with chronic homelessness and mental health issues filling up the 30 vouchers provided by the state within six months with expansion planned for next year. DPCS served 333 individuals with a home and community-based waiver so that they could thrive in the community and not simply reside in an institution. We provided 6,671 medication management appointments for adults and children, and finally, Demonstrating the scope of one core service provided to most individuals served at DPCS, 27,532 units of case management were provided to 2,938 individuals. These are just a few examples of the nearly 50 unique programs for adults and children operated by DPCS through its behavioral health, developmental, and prevention services division. The places that are under construction, renovations and expansion of our service locations in the last year and ongoing into the next year are everywhere. Three of our four residential facilities for developmental services have had renovations or are completing res renovations to enhance the homes of the 29 individuals who choose to live with DPCS. Our main campus location on Hairston Street past the midpoint of the expansion and renovation project at the close of the fiscal year, which will consolidate services and provide a one-stop facility to meet the needs of individuals of any age at one site. As I give this report to you in November, the new wing was opened to staff to move in today. The remaining campus renovations are planned for completion by year's end. A community open house will be planned for the spring. More details will be coming. The people making the construction happen, DPCS is a workforce nearly 300 strong, composed of men and women who are passionate and decide, dedicated in their work to help others live, work, and play in their communities at their maximum potential. Each one of the staff brings their unique passion, skill set, and focus that makes an impact each day on the lives of those we are honored to serve. DPCS is also <clears throat> a volunteer board of directors composed of 15 citizens dedicated to our community. Seven of those board members, including myself, are appointed by you, the Danville City Council and the remaining are appointed by the Pennsylvania County Board of Supervisors. The staff at DPCS work with infants, toddlers, children, adolescents, adults, and seniors. This is everyone in our community. In fiscal year 2017, DPCS directly served 17,192 residents of the city of Danville and Pennsylvania County through 100, 
196,573 distinct units of service. In closing, on behalf of our Board of Directors, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for appointing seven members from the City of Danville to the Danville, Pennsylvania Community Services Board of Directors. It is our honor and pleasure to serve the community in this capacity. We appreciate your confidence and ongoing support. Jim Bebo is here with me tonight to assist with any questions you may have. Questions, Council? Yes, a question as much as a comment. Thank you guys for all you did for our community. Most people never fully grasp what you guys do. And, and I'm just here to say thank you very much for all that you do. It's a thank wonderful you. We appreciate your support. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, on, also on behalf of Councilman Buckner and all of council members, I want to thank you so much for all that you're doing and thank you so much for your report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For your thank, time. you. Appreciate thank you. Communications from visitors. This is an opportunity for our citizens who do not desire to speak to speak on the items not listed on the agenda. Citizens who desire to speak on items on the agenda will speak on those items when the agenda comes forward. Madam Clerk, can you read the rules, please? Communications from visitors is an opportunity for citizens to address council on matters not on the agenda. Citizens who desire to speak on agenda items will be heard when the agenda item is considered. Each speaker shall clearly state his or her name and address. Each individual speaker shall have five uninterrupted minutes. A representative of a group may have up to 10 uninterrupted minutes to make a presentation. The representative shall identify the group, and a group may have no more than one spokesperson. Time will be kept using the electronic timer on the podium. Thank you so much. Anyone who would like to speak to an item that's not on the agenda may come forward at this time, stating your name and your address for the record, please. My name is and I would first off like to thank you, Mayor, and Council Members for letting me speak. Um, and I'm going to try to do this the way that I'm supposed to. Um, my address is 610 Westview, and that is actually not my address. That is my parents' address. So I'm speaking on behalf of not only my parents, but also the neighborhood members of Westview. Um, I'm Westview and the Nordan uh, Flood District, I should call it. Um, I have some pictures that pretty much are going to speak for me. Of course, during Michael and other times, the area is inundated with floods. Now, this is my parents' backyard. To the right-hand side is their fence before when they first moved there about 10 years ago. This also was about before that time. This was the day that Michael happened. Okay, this was up at the reservoir that is across from Walmart. This is what my parents and their neighbors' backyards look like. This is not the first time that we've had to present this to the city. Last July 17th, there was a minor rain that also took out part of the backyard. It took down a tree and left stumps. This is my parents' exact backyard. Five feet of their yard was lost to this. Their fence was taken down. This is what it looks like now. I don't know what else I can say. There's, this is the stump of the tree that went down last July 17th. We've asked for help. We've asked for at least to get that reservoir under control. It's not happening. We also have other pictures. I thought they were on the PowerPoint. They are not from other neighbors in that neighborhood. There were three neighbors just in that little area that had to totally have their basements redone. They had to take up floors. Um, all the neighbors lost their fences that day. They saw tires, they saw trash, everything coming down through that, that gully way into their backyards. It, it's their backyards, but it's basically a trash dump right now. And I just, my, I have more of a question to the city council and to the city manager. What are the plans? Every time we call, every time we say we need help, because that is not a creek. It's a reservoir. And, and at one time, it 
wasn't overrun. The neighbor to my mother's right, who is unable to be here because she has to be with her mother, over the past 50 years, my parents have only been there about 12 years. She's been there 50 years, and she's lost about 25 feet of her yard to this reservoir. So my question is, city council, mayor, city manager, what are the plans? What can we do to help this neighborhood? And it also extends over as well to the next road, to the road that runs parallel to Nordan. Well, let me respond to you by stating that, first of all, thank you all for being here. And there are people here with you, if they want yes. to stand, please. Yes. You want to stand? Stand. Or oh, just wave your hand. Thank you all also for being here. This is, thank you all for being here. What, we, what I would like to suggest that you do, because this is the first time city council have seen this, these two young men to my right and your left, the city manager and deputy city manager, I would like for you to set up, the reason that we ask people to state their name and their address is so that the city manager and the deputy city manager can sit down and talk with you all about the options and everything else that can be done. So may I suggest that you all talk with this, meet with the city manager Absolutely. and the deputy city manager, and they'll be more than happy to assist you the best way they know how. Is that possible? Absolutely. Thank you so and I, much. And the PowerPoint is here. Also, I brought these photos. Let's give them to the city manager. Thank you. Thank you so much. You. And our city manager, they, they will get in touch with you and they'll take it from there. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Again, thank you. Um, Councilman Shanks. Certainly. The, uh, the reservoir that's upstream from you across from the Walmart, that was put in, I don't know, 8, 10, 12 years ago. Absolutely. Uh, prior, uh, did you all ever see any relief? or prior to that being in place did you have flood issues and if they, so was there any relief when that was put in since that has been put in the flood issues have gotten worse the reason why i ask and this year is a, oh, not a good year to judge by i mean we all it's been a most unusual year for storms i mean really unusual it has but but uh i was curious about how that that it has was a minor impact. rain on July 17th last year, it was a minor rain, but it was enough of a rain. There's a slate bed that runs at the where the where the reservoir is behind my parents' house, and the water now it doesn't even have a direction. It just kind of goes wherever it wants to go because it's literally taken out so much of the land, and it's just eroded and erodes and erodes. This last year they lost a percentage of the yard. This year it was five feet. So every year it gets worse, and it's and yes, Michael was an unusual storm. Um, they had basically a swimming pool down at the end of um, Westview, closer toward Jail X Johnson. Um, th that area was totally underwater. They also had walkways and driveways and bridges at that end were, that were taken out. And we didn't immediately call the city manager's office because we knew that Danville had a lot of other issues that were going on. But again, this is not a new issue. This is something that has been going on. And of course, we, you know, we've gone through the channels that we need to go through for, to help with assistance with repairing. The insurance companies say that we don't live in a flood area. They would fix the fence because it uh, was wind damage, but they wouldn't fix the yard because it was an uh, act of God. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the difference is. I think an act of God is better. Well, thank you. I, I, I appreciate the history on that. I was Dr. curious about that. Thank you. Dr. Miller? Well, recently we had evaluators from, I guess, FEMA and, and other groups come in. Do you think they would uh, provide help for conditions like this, grants or funding? Right now, they're in the assessment phase still, and we haven't received any official word on what help, if any, they'd be giving to individuals um, for this kind of thing. Uh, but we are, we've been in talks with them, and um, they haven't made that determination yet. But uh, we expect that determination to be made soon and, and, to, and to be able to let the public know what form that assistance will be in. Anything else, Dr. Miller? No. Councilman Tom? Yeah, is this a city-owned reservoir or city-owned? Who owns that? Do we know? Uh, I'm not sure um, who owns that property. 
it's, right. it's my understanding the city owns the actual reservoir. The land that the reservoir leaks on is private property. But the, the way the water comes through, it comes through city owned. It, it, it comes out of a city owned reservoir into the residents' backyards because the reservoir can't hold it. It, it looks like it's a retention pond. It was, yeah, put, that it was built be a to a certain be a capacity. Pond for yeah, flooding. it was put there for stormwater management. Purposes. Yeah, stormwater management. Yeah. Anything else, Councilman Tom? Anything it. else? No, thank you. Again, thank you so much. Um, the city manager just gave your family a, his card. Please reach out to him. He'll be reaching out to you. And we can't thank you all enough for being here tonight. Thank, thank you all you. so much. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak on any item that's not on the agenda may come forward this time. And please state your name and your address. Anyone else? Let's go to a minutes. Uh, consideration of approval of minutes from regular council meeting held on October the 4th, 2018. Council, what's your pleasure? <coughs> Councilman Whittle, is there a second? Councilman Saunders, it's discussion of the motion. Mm -hmm. Discussion of the motion. Madam Clerk, call the vote, please. Yes. Mr. Buckner. Reverend Campbell? Aye. Mayor Jones? Aye. Dr. Miller? Aye. Mr. Saunders? Aye. Mr. Shanks? Aye. Mr. Toma? Aye. Vice Mayor Vogler? Aye. Mr. Whittle? Aye. Consideration of appointments to the following boards of commissions. Vice Mayor? <clears throat> yes, Mayor. I move that we adopt a resolution reappointing Richard L. Turner as a member of the Industrial Development Authority, a resolution reappointing John Larimore as a member of the Industrial Development Authority, a resolution reappointing Max Glass as a member of the Industrial Development Authority. A resolution appointing Anna Kautzman as a member of the Transportation Advisory Board. A resolution appointing Paul Leapy as a member of the Danville Utility Commission to fill an unexpired term. Is there a second? Second. Councilman Shanks, discussion of the motion? Discussion of the motion? Councilman Sorry, I, I didn't get the packet. The unexpired term is? The Utility resigned. Commission. Somebody resigned. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Okay. This guy, we're still in discussion. Any more discussion? Madam Clerk, call the roll, please. Reverend Campbell. Aye. Mayor Jones. Aye. Dr. Miller. Aye. Mr. Saunders. Aye. Mr. Shanks. Aye. Mr. Tomer. Aye. Vice Mayor Vogler. Aye. Mr. Whittle. Aye. Mr. Buckner. Aye. Communications to the manager. I got nothing this evening. Thank you, sir. Deputy City Manager. Nothing this evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. City Attorney? Uh, nothing this evening, Mr. Mayor. City Clerk? Nothing, sir. Roll call, please. Dr. Miller? Uh, yes. Um, since we're talking about it, I've talked to Rick Dervinovich uh, from Public Works uh, just before this. And so far, they, they've picked up 2,200 truckloads of wood debris from Michael and, and taken to the dump, plus tons of debris, uh, uh, furniture, appliances have been ruined. I mean, they're just doing a great job of cleaning up the city, but there's been so such magnitude. And he's, you know, I know that they said they were going to continue through another week or two, but he said, you know, if you've got wood debris and you've got things that need to be picked up, they will continue to pick those up as long as they need to. So uh, it's, it was just an overwhelming amount. Think about that, 2,200 truckloads of wood debris alone. I uh, want to congratulate uh, Danville. We had a 54% turnout that's amazing especially in an off presidential election so glad that people go out and want to congratulate all the winners and i hate to say losers because you know people on council know how much hard work it is to campaign and go to debates and do door to door and just you know everybody even if they don't win brings a lot to the, these campaigns so we want to congratulate everybody that ran and congratulate damble for the turnout uh, recently we met with the life saving crew and uh, they pointed out that their budget now is upwards of $2.1 million, of which the city only provides $80,000 a year, which is about 3%. Uh, you know, the Life Saving Crew has been invaluable. They did like 40, I don't know how many whitewater rescues they did during the recent flooding. And that's just one thing they do, extract people from vehicles. Uh, they do 99% of the uh, emergency calls, you know, for true emergencies. Uh, and uh, so we, we really appreciate with the life saving crew and I, and I know all the council wants to look and see if we can help them more than just the three percent we're currently allotting to the life saving crew uh, back to the election there's two amendments 
I thought were worthy. Uh, the, uh, they both passed partial tax exemption for real property <coughs> that is subject to recurrent flooding if improvements have been made by the property owner to address flooding. And then the other one dealt with veterans, the homes of veterans. Right now, if they <coughs> leave their home, they're in a, 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 a spouse of a 100% service-connected veteran uh, and go somewhere else, that property is not tax exempt. And these two things have passed pretty overwhelmingly, and I think we're going to have to look. It allows communities to make that determination where they want to participate. So I think council needs to look at that, and uh, you know, we'll have to talk about it if we want to do that, but we'll have to draw up the rules of who qualifies for those exemptions. That's something we need to do. Uh, a couple more things. Uh, Woodbury School, I went out there a couple weeks ago, uh, got a healthy breakfast. Kids are getting good breakfasts. Miss Kazia, the cafeteria. Uh, the kids come in. All kids get a meal, get a breakfast in the morning, and they get lunch. Uh, but it's really healthy food. Uh, the principal was very complimentary, and he appreciated what council and the school board had done. You know, that was one of the schools that was overcrowded a few years ago when they consolidated schools. Uh, the class sizes went over 30. Teachers can't teach when there's 30 kids in a classroom. There's just no way. Uh, now, since they've deconsolidated, uh, they, they average 16 to 18 uh, students. Uh, they have 246 kids. They don't have to fight over the bathrooms. Teachers used to have to fight. You know, each teacher had to fight to get her kids to the bathroom first because there's only two in Woodbury. Uh, but they really appreciated uh, the deconsolidation of schools that had occurred this year. Um, and uh, then one thing I'm not so proud of. If you notice in the paper, or you may not have noticed, there was an 18-year-old died this week, 19-year-old. It doesn't say what he died from, but I can tell you what he died from. He died from an overdose. And it said he died in North Carolina. You know, that's where he died. But he was from Virginia. He was from Pennsylvania County. Uh, he just happened to be in North Carolina when he died. Uh, 72,000 people died of overdoses last year in this country, more than auto accidents, more than breast cancers, more than many other cancers. It's a tremendous plague on a community. I know who this kid was because his mother works for me. And it was just, it just it devastates the family. Uh, we need to do something, you know, we need to fight this, this epidemic. Uh, one thing that we're proposing, is we join the uh, uh, class action suit against these pharmaceutical companies. Uh, so far they've paid out about $600 million uh, They've made $18.7 billion off these drugs. $18.7 billion. So what they've paid out uh, to pay for the damage they've wrought is, is just a small fraction. Uh, you know, it's costing our city uh, a lot of money in treatments, rescues, uh, counseling. Uh, you know, there was an article in the paper the other day about Martinsville being number one in the, in the uh, state, uh, 23 overdoses a month. Well, Danville's had a couple of months where we were 17 and 18 and 12 overdoses. Uh, these are not deaths, these are overdoses. Some die, some don't. But it, it, it's a terrible epidemic. This is where you don't want to be in the top 100. You know, Danville prides ourselves in one of the top 100 cities. Well, we're in the top 100 in Virginia. We're in the top 10 in Virginia in overdoses. And so we need to, to lend help because this is, this is devastating when an 18-year-old dies. And, you know, that's the end of the story for him. So, drugs, we need to seriously consider joining that suit. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Miller. Mr. Saunders. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I appreciate City Manager and his staff working very hard to get assistance for people whose property was damaged behind this last flood we had. I think most of us would agree that Danville hadn't seen nothing like this in quite some time. And the damage is very, very substantial. So thank you so much for trying to find all the resources that you can to help our citizens. Also, uh, thank the city manager and staff for extend, extending the trash pickup bulk and all that for the 9th, I believe, which will be tomorrow. However, there are still people still cleaning out their home, their basement. Um, a lot of people try to get humi humidifiers. You can't find one in the 50-mile, 100-mile radius. They're all out. So if there's any way possible to extend that, as you drive throughout the city, people still have stuff on the curb. And I'm not sure if tomorrow's deadline will 
will take care of the problem. So if there's, if there's a way to ex extend that, I hope it will be considered. And again, I want to thank all the city employees, public safety, etc., for what you did and are still doing to help our people. And Mr. Mayor, I understand you were walking through the woods because the road to your property was washed out. That's correct. So uh, it was pretty, pretty serious. Yes, yes sir. So uh, thank you, um, Mr. Manager, and thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, city Manager, uh, to Councilman Saunders' uh, request, can you speak on that? Because I, I agree. Is there any way, can you speak on that? And I hate to put you on the spot because you know I hate doing that. Uh, no problem. I, I, if uh, there are still, if it's evident that the debris at the curb is flood-related damage, Public Works will pick it up. Rick, Citizens Rick, don't have to worry. He just said for this meeting, call him and they'll come pick it up. Yeah. The deadline is not a hard and fast deadline. We'll, we'll work with people. It, it's clearly that's what they're doing now. We, we just don't. We, we want. We are concerned that people might abuse it for some other reason. We we don't think that's going to happen in most cases. But um, if it's clearly flood-related damage, we're, we're certainly going to assist our citizens with that. Yeah. Well, thank you, Councilman Saunders, for bringing it to attention. A lot of time our citizens don't know that, and we want to make sure we can be the best customer service we can possibly can. And thank you, City Manager. Madam Clerk. Mr. Shanks. I have nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Tomer. Yes. I would like to, uh, as uh, Councilman Miller pointed out, I'd like to congratulate our new Congressman, uh, Denver Riggleman, on uh, winning. I look forward to working with him. And I would like to congratulate uh, Senator Tim Kaine on being reelected. Uh, re I look forward to working with him as well. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor Vogler. <clears throat> yeah, I echo the sentiments Councilman Tomer just made and also, uh, you know, the, the flood damages. I, I know people are still sorting through how much damage it is. I know my, myself, if you rode past my house earlier today, just about every piece of furniture I had in my basement was out on the curb today because we did, we were flooded bad. And so I'm glad to hear that these pickups will continue because it takes a while to figure out how bad some of the stuff is and what can be saved and what can't be saved. Um, and I know a lot of people are still sorting through all that now. It, it was a, a tremendous, tremendous storm that uh, we faced. Um, and I'm glad Dr. Miller brought up the, the opioid uh, situation. It is serious. And um, it, it's something that has to be addressed and it has to be looked at it from, from every front. Um, and I know at one point in time, and maybe we could get an update on this at, at a near council meeting, um, but, but drug treatment courts. I know that we're talking about having drug courts and, and things of that nature to help with some of the issues that we're facing. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in that, and I believe that that, that among some other things we need to, to look at and implement and what the status is on that. But, um, you know, drug courts have shown to, to reduce recidivism, drug dependency, uh, and graduates of the program, I looked up some stats because this is important. Graduates of the programs have a 33% higher income and rate of employment versus their dropout peers. So um, again, we need to look at this situation from every front and, and really work towards finding some solutions. It impacts everything that we do, workforce, health cost, I mean everything. And Doc knows this, Doc explained it much better than I ever could. But. Um, I, I, I'm with you. We need to, to look at this and, and find a solution. Lastly, I wanted to, to end on a positive note because there are a lot of positive things happening, uh, a couple of which, you know, in the recent weeks, we've had some really good economic development announcements. When it's BGF Industries relocating their headquarters from Greensboro here to Danville, and that's not very common, by the way, to find a company like that, global company, relocate their headquarters from a larger city to come to a smaller city, but they believe enough in Danville and what's happening here to make that commitment. And then, of course, Harlow Group uh, a week or two ago uh, with their announcement and, and what they're doing here and, and trying to get other companies to follow them. They are recruiting the companies to follow them here, not just what we're doing. Um, so they believe, again, in what we're doing, not only for them to come here, but to encourage other industries to follow them. Uh, since 2013, we've had 20 industrial companies locate to Danville with just seven, uh, seven economic development announcements this year alone, um, just this year alone. So Telly Tucker, um, I got to include Matt Rowe out in Pennsylvania County because we're a partnership where we work collectively. Um, those guys and the whole team that they have doing tremendous work um, and, and of course city council and, and with, we work on RIFA with the, with the Board of Supervisors. A lot of economic activity happening in our city and our region. City of Danville, lowest unemployment rate in over a decade. That's something to celebrate, but I know each one of us in this room won't be happy until that number's at zero. 
but uh, we're certainly heading in the right direction. Very proud of this city, uh, very proud of what we're doing, but like that old song says, uh, we've only just begun. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Whittle. Yeah, the, uh, the, the joint meeting with Rescue Squad was extremely informative, and we do, uh, uh, I feel like we need to pitch in and help them out a little more. Uh, and with your fr flood related, I've got a property on the other side of that spillway and I need to check that and I'll keep up with the city manager and we'll see what we can get worked out. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Buckner. Yeah, I'd like to thank everybody who came out last weekend, supported the uh, this year's fall uh, Bridge Street food truck rodeo. It was a great success. A lot of trucks came from all over the place and a lot of them sold out this time. So. Uh, thank you to everyone who came out and supported that. Um, this Saturday uh, at the community market is the 11th annual Bright Leaf Brew Fest, which is guaranteed to be a good time. It's all day. I think it starts at 1 to 8, I believe, are the times on that. Um, so hop in the uh, mainline trolley and uh, catch a ride down there or catch a ride, drive yourself there and take the trolley home. So it's <laughs> bound to be a good time. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Reverend Campbell. Yes, uh, to the city manager, could you just address the issue about, um, I've gotten several calls of citizens still dealing with the effect of the hurricane and what they can do in reference to what's coming up next week. Sure, the, uh, the first thing that uh, homeowners need to do or any property owners need to do with regard to damages that, they've occurred, that have occurred due to the hurricane is contact their insurance provider. And a lot of people will find that they don't have flood insurance and will have to take steps on their own to, to make improvements. Uh, what we are doing as a city is we've been working with our state and federal partners through the Virginia Department of Emergency Management and the uh, Federal Emergency Management Agency. Um, they have uh, both have had representatives come to our community in recent weeks. They've made assessments, have verified damage uh, that has occurred in both public and private property and they are making a determination on to what kind of uh, assistance they'll be able to provide to the city um, and to the residents and property owners. I don't know exactly what form that's going to be in, but we understand that we are going to get a determination through the governor's office sometime next week. And that once we have that information, then we'll be able to share that with the community. We'll make sure that everybody uh, knows what they can do, what, what steps they need to take, uh, and what kind of assistance will be available. In addition to that, our deputy city manager has been working on um, some local uh, assistance programs. Nothing set up yet, but uh, that could also provide some assistance to property owners. Um, and uh, uh, we'll be sharing that information as soon as that's ready as well. But um, unfortunately, we don't have anything right now to announce, but very soon we should. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Jones. Just want to say to um, all of you who are here tonight, we always welcome our citizens. And I hope you've gotten the answers that you want. Also would like to say ditto what was stated in regards to the Danville Life Saving Crew, to Robbie and the entire staff and board of directors hosting us. That was absolutely great. I want to recognize someone. They're going to kill me for recognizing them. But Cindy Petit is here, and she doesn't like a lot of accolades and recognition. But she's sitting to my left. But she does a lot of work with our young people over in Cedar Terrace. And she goes up and beyond trying to make sure that they get all kinds of licensures, whether it's nursing license or driver's license. And Cindy, this is an opportunity. We just want to say thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you. Mr. Dotson, will the Dotson family please stand up? There's another one high, and I think there's another one back there, isn't it? So what's amazing about this is we talk about Danville. You heard the vice mayor talk about Danville and job rating. You hear Councilman Saunders and I talk all the time of what do we need to do to keep young people here. Mr. Dotson, raise your hand. He had, a, no, not the father, the son. I, I had a chance to go to his class this week, his government class yesterday. And I thought about your father because you were teaching at George Washington High School too. Now the son is teaching. And I attended your class yesterday and it was absolutely amazing to be able to see those young people. And Councilman Saunders, it was exactly what we talked about. Those young people were attentive, they were well behaved, and I believe they were listening. So to Mr. Dotson, the father, I mean, it's just amazing to see Danville and how you're growing and your children are back here in Danville. It means so much to us. Thank you for what you all are doing in our community. 
This past weekend, I was with uh, several of the council members at the food truck festival, and so many things amazed me about the food truck festival. One thing stood out the most to me was when I went to Councilman Buckner, and this was a vision of Councilman Buckner's, and I went to Councilman Buckner, and I said, I am so proud of you. And this is just the, the stellar of our council. He said, hold on, wait a minute. He said, it was the entire council member members who voted on this. But I'm going to publicly say thank you. You can't talk back now because your time is up. But to see the number of people down there, to see the fellowship, um, I tried to get Councilman Whittle to buy me something, but that didn't happen. He went upstairs to somebody's window and started hollering out at me. But the fellowship with Councilman Tomer, um, Councilman, all of us was there. It was just amazing, and thank you so much for it. And now we have this weekend. We have a lot going on this weekend with the Brew Fest. The Lynx has something going on. And Schoolfield, we got the invitation for Schoolfield accreditation. A lot of great things are happening in Danville. Also, just want to thank Council and our city manager because I have good news tonight. The community Christmas dinner, at one time we heard that it was not going to happen. A lot of our citizens depend on this. I got a report before I came in today that they had $700 left in their fund and they didn't think it was going to happen. So I want to thank the citizens of Danville, and I'm happy to report they have over $9,000 worth of donations and the community Christmas dinner will happen this year. So Danville, thank you all so much. And to all of our veterans, we salute you, Councilman Saunders and all the veterans. This weekend being Veterans Day, Veterans Day Parade, we thank you for your service. And now we are adjourned. Thank you. Yes. If you if you lost your tablet, there's a tablet there.